I'll never forget when I was a kid and I heard that sax solo on The Going Gets Tough by Billy Ocean. And there was this trill thing in it and I could never understand what it was. And I thought it was so cool. It sounds like this. And then somewhere down the line, I discovered that Cannonball Adderley was really the one who made it famous and started doing it in the first case. Um, and this is what he does on his famous Love for Sale solo. It's a good example of it. Check this out. <laughs> So that's why people call it the Cannonball Trail, because he kind of made it famous, really. But just before I teach you exactly how to do it, here's another few examples of that exact same trill. First of all, check out John Helliwell on the outro of The Logical Song by Supertramp. Everybody says that King Curtis does it a lot, but I listened to a lot of King Curtis, I couldn't find a very good example. But here's King Curtis doing it backwards on the tune Tough Talk. <laughs> And much more recently, Avery Dixon performing in the semi-finals of America's Got Talent. Check this out. So if you go looking for it, you can find this cannonball trill everywhere and it's just so cool. This is basically what it sounds like. Now, once you know what you're looking for, you're gonna see this trill absolutely everywhere. It's very ubiquitous in pop, funk, soul, sax playing. Uh, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. And it's not quite as straightforward as you think, but I'm gonna break it down into every little step so you can do the cannonball trill perfectly yourself. Just before we get there, if you want some more details about the cannonball trill, including an extra part of the trill I can't teach you on today's video, then go and check out the Get Your Sacks Together Inner Circle membership. There's loads of awesome content in there and there's loads of cool sax players just like you who are super enthusiastic about their instrument and about getting better. And you should see the special guests we've got lined up just for that community. It's really, really cool. So click the link down in the description or the link that you can see there to find out more and sign up and you can get a completely free seven day trial. That's right, you can jump right in there, enjoy all the benefits for an entire week and make sure it's for you before you sign up. And if you want an absolutely free one hour lesson with loads of great stuff teaching you how to play saxophone, you can go and check out my now famous one hour saxophone success masterclass. You can use the link that you can see there or you can click the links in the description for both those awesome resources. Right, that's the parish notices. Now let's break down this drill. Now the first thing you need to learn is the notes. Let's cover the notes first. Now when I demonstrated it, I did it in G on alto, and it really works best on G on any saxophone that you're playing. So concert F if you're playing tenor, or a concert B flat if you're playing alto. It just works well in that key on those saxophones. So what you're gonna do is, you're just gonna go up chromatically from B flat, and you're gonna use the bis key B flat. You're gonna play B flat, B, C, C sharp, and finish on D. And you can use these notes in combinations with any other bluesy phrase, but the actual core of the Cannonball Trill is going to be B flat. It might be B, but let's say we start on B flat, B, C, C sharp, and D. Simple as that. So that's the actual notes you're going to play. All right, simple as that. B flat, B, C, C sharp, and then finish on D. I'll do it one more time. Now we move on to the second thing. The second important part of the Cannibal Trill is the trill itself. Now, you're not gonna trill the notes as you would imagine, as you would normally trill a B flat, or you would trill a B, or you would trill a C, or you would trill a C sharp. It's a completely different thing. What you're gonna do is, you're gonna trill all these notes with one key. That one key is the high E key, which is the third side key, the highest side key on the side, that one there, okay? Yours might look a little bit scooped up, but mine's flat because I've got a Mark VI. You're gonna trill all those notes with that key. Now, what you often see people doing, and what you probably saw me doing, is taking your hand off the thumb rest and then flicking your thumb on that key. Why do you do this? I think it's because it makes the, the you can really kind of hit that trill much faster than you can 
with the side of your hand, but you could equally do it with the side of your hand. It really is not a deal breaker, but for some reason, <laughs> when you see people doing it, and I love to do it like this, you take your hand off and you rifle it on the side. So we're gonna trill each of those notes using that side key. Now you're gonna hear some interesting stuff when you do that, because this, if you break it down in slow motion, this is what the trills actually sound like. That first one sounds like an ambulance. That's what the trills sound like when you use that side E key, but we're gonna do it much faster than that. So now practice doing exactly the same thing, but with much faster trills. And when you get to that top D, you're just gonna hold that D and you're gonna branch off into whatever blues phrase you like, okay? So the D isn't gonna be trilled. I'll play those trills one more time. Now make sure you practice as well. Get your sax and practice this. Of course, if you're playing tenor, it'll be in a different key, but don't transpose this. It's gonna be the same notes on every saxophone. That's really important. You can only do this on these specific notes. Very important. I'll play it one more time, the trills. Okay, now you're getting close to the cannibal trill, but there's much more to it than that because we are now gonna talk about the third important point, which is the phrasing. Now the third point, the phrasing is divided into three itself. The phrasing is divided into the bends, the timing, and the dynamics. Those three things, bends, timing, dynamics. So first of all, let's call this 3A, okay? The bends. Each note, you're going to do a deep bend into using your throat or your larynx, not lip pressure, okay? It's not a lip scoop. You're going to bend into those notes by moving your larynx down and back, like you know, moving your throat down. Some people talk about using tongue position. Some people talk about using vowels, <laughs> but whatever you do, you're bending the pitch uh, from here, not from here. So just focusing on the bends alone, this is what, we're calling it 3A, this is what the bends would sound like. And you're gonna hit the top D straight on, okay? No bend on the D. Here's the bends one more time. I think I did do a bend on the top one, didn't I? Okay, let's let's say that the bend on the on the uh, the last D is optional. <laughs> right, three B. We've covered the bends. Three B is going to be the timing. Now you're not going to trill the notes continuously. You're going to hit the note, and then a split second later, you're going to bring in the trill. So <laughs> yeah, I think it's better than I that I play it rather than sing it. Don't you think? Okay, so here's what the bends and the timing of the trills sound like. So you're gonna bend, wait a split second, hit the trill, bend, wait a split second, hit the trill, bend, hit, oh, wait a split second, hit the trill. Sounds like this. And the final part of uh, the phrasing, 3C is the dynamics. So the dynamics are going to be you hit the note hard, then when you bring the trill in, you take that dynamic down a bit. This is very important. This is the difference between it sounding really wicked and authentic and maybe slightly off the mark. So bend, hit it hard, wait a split second, bring the dynamic down and hit the trill. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> it kind of sounds like a race car going up the gears. So I'll show you what I mean. As opposed to. So these are the little touches, the cherry on the icing on the top of the cake, if you like which are gonna make the big difference to how good your cannonball trill sounds. Once you've got that together, 
Remember, you're scooping, bringing it back, trilling it, going up to the next note. All these little subtleties are going to make a big difference. Once you can get that all together, then you can blend it in with uh, a couple of your favourite blues phrases in G. It could be a major blues scale, could be a minor blues scale. And I'll put a link in the description for playing the blues, and I'll teach you all about blues scales if you don't know what they are. So here's what it sounds when you put it all together. I'm going to stand up so that you can see my, my hands a bit better, okay? Here we go. So take your time, get your cannonball trills together, and in no time you'll be doing this special effect trill, which sounds absolutely wicked next time you're jamming on stage. Now I've got a whole video on other special stunt trills, things you've never crossed your mind. I'll link that on the card above now. And don't forget, Inside the Inner Circle membership, there's a bunch more stuff. There's loads of content every month. You're gonna absolutely love it. There's loads of super keen sax players, just like you, right in there enjoying it every month. And don't forget about the incredible special guests. If you've bought me a cup of coffee, oh, I should have a merch. Look at that duff cup. I should have a Get Your Sax Together merch cup. <laughs> anyway, if you've bought me a coffee, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's all very much appreciated. You're very generous. And if you do want to buy me a coffee because you're getting good value from these videos, you can use the link that you can see there or click the link in the description. I'll be back next week, saxing up your Sunday, as always here on Get Your Sax Together. I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson. Until then, practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. See you later. Um, it doesn't matter what you play for the bruise for the blues phrase. <laughs> I'm just gonna make up a couple of little bruise. Oh, that's an outtake. Maybe I need more coffee.